Welcome to Hatman Stretch Back Daily Boxing News. So this was pretty much the worst kept secret in boxing over the past couple months, but it's now been made official and announced publicly by all parties. And that is that Frank Warren has signed a multi-year broadcast deal with the zone, which starts in April. Now let's just get the obvious out of the way first. Frank Warren made previous comments when he was with BT, which is now TNT, about the zone just being an app and how nobody watches it. He was deriding the zone basically. And he's kind of touched on this in the interviews he's done since announcing this DAZN deal. And his excuse for the stuff he said in the past is pretty laughable. He's now making out as though the team at DAZN are totally different. And this was the game changer. And this is what makes DAZN credible all of a sudden when previously he was making out as though they were not a credible broadcaster. It's nonsense because the issues he had with DAZN before are largely still there now. And in fact, there are new issues which we'll come on to, which didn't exist to the same extent back when Frank Warren was criticizing the zone. Just to give you one example, Frank Warren, even from the very early BT days, was criticizing the number of pay-per-views that Eddie Hearn was doing on Sky. And later on, he was criticizing Eddie Hearn doing pay-per-views on the zone when the zone was supposed to be the pay-per-view killer. Now, of course, the zone are doing more pay-per-views than ever. And this is when Frank Warren signs with him. Warren used to make out as though he cared so much about the fans. It's all about the fans. And felt that Eddie Hearn and Sky and later on DAZN were doing the fans a disservice. But here we have Frank Warren signing with DAZN. So yeah, that's that. Now, one of the major implications for Frank Warren doing this deal might be that it makes Eddie Hearn completely irrelevant because DAZN are a global broadcaster. So potentially we could have Frank Warren doing a lot more overseas shows, being involved maybe in the American boxing market, signing a lot of talent from overseas. Eddie Hearn's stable is already dwindling. He's lost most of his big stars. AJ's on the way out. Frank Warren's the one who's been signing all the new heavyweight talent. And of course, he's still got Tyson Fury. He's got Daniel Dubois, who holds a version of the heavyweight title, etc. After the 5v5 that Queensbury did versus Matchroom, Turkey Al Sheik said to Eddie Hearn in the ring afterwards, because Eddie Hearn lost every single match, that he should retire. Now, Hearn says that Turkey Al Sheik is a wind up and he likes to make these facetious comments, but a lot of truth is said in jest. There's a reason why, over the past, whatever it is, year or so, Frank Warren has been the lead promoter on these Riyadh season cards. You know, Matchroom have their people, for example, like David Diamante, the announcer for Matchroom shows, the big shows anyway. He's been sidelined for these Riyadh season shows for the most part, and it's now Thomas Triber, who isn't as good as David Diamante as far as I'm concerned. But because of his association with Frank Warren, Triber gets the opportunities. So, as I say, Warren seems to be favored by Turkey Al Sheik over Eddie Hearn. And now that Warren has signed with the zone, which seems to be Turkey Al Sheik's platform of choice, then as I say, maybe Eddie Hearn will be pushed to the sidelines even more. Remember, Eddie Hearn was the main promoter on the zone for years. In fact, up until now, he's been the main promoter on the zone. With Frank Warren signing with him, that's no longer the case, surely. Warren will be the main promoter. Now, reporting about this particular story, the media are banging on about the implications of this for Warren's business, how great it's going to be for him. I'm more concerned, however, with the implications for the customers. Now, presumably, there will be more non-pay-per-view boxing content on the zone as a result of this deal. Frank Warren has an extensive stable, but will the non-pay-per-view content be of sufficient quality to justify the already high subscription cost that the zone charge and this continued churning out of pay-per-views every couple of months? It's total overkill when it comes to pay-per-views at this stage. That's one of the downsides of this Riyadh season thing is everything's on pay-per-view and they're stacking the cards with fights which are good fights but could have been regular subscription content rather than pay-per-view content. I've said several times over the past six months or so, it's got to the stage now on zone where the only boxing content actually worth watching is pay-per-view content. And of course, that wasn't the case in the first 18 months or so after the zone launched. There was loads of content on there that was fantastic. I mean, in the UK, the Canelo fights, for example, were not pay-per-view initially. It's all changed now. So what level of free content will Queensbury be adding to the DAZN schedule? Will it just be these domestic UK fights? 
between people that don't have particularly big followings because the ones who do have big followings surely are going to be stuck on the undercard of Riyadh season events. You see the issue? Low level stuff between miscellaneous British fighters who might be competitive with one another, but it's not exactly unmissable stuff, right? Secondly, with Frank Warren signing with the zone, what happens with regards to TNT and Sky with Riyadh season? Because up until this point, TNT and Sky were also putting on pay-per-views for those events. And the reason that that, as far as I'm concerned, was a positive to some extent is because a lot of customers don't like the zone and their practices, particularly with regards to canceling their subscriptions. The zone are currently being sued in California, in case you don't know, over misleading practices regarding, again, how difficult it is for customers to actually cancel their subscriptions and other issues. I hope, whether it's the state of California or whoever it is doing the lawsuit, I hope they're successful. And it's class action, as far as I can remember. If they are successful, then maybe it puts an end to the zone's foul behavior in relation to the way they're treating their customers. So with Sky and TNT, and this is in the UK, obviously, also doing pay-per-views for the same Riyadh season shows that the zone are doing, customers get the opportunity not to have to deal with the zone. When you purchase a pay-per-view with TNT or Sky, it's a one-off thing. You're not locked into some type of contract as many customers have ended up being with the zone. With Sky and TNT, it's a one-off payment that's it, no problem, no strings attached. Now, some people might argue that when you buy a DAZN pay-per-view, it's better value than Sky or TNT because you get like a month of DAZN content as well. It's actually more than that because of the strings attached. It's quite difficult to leave after just a month following the pay-per-view. But as I alluded to earlier on, yeah, you get a month of DAZN, but the content is mostly rubbish. I think they've got one upcoming DAZN show that isn't pay-per-view that's actually worth watching. And that's the Gilberto Ramirez, Chris Billum Smith show. Not that it's an amazing card, by the way. It's a decent card, you know, pretty good card, but nothing unmissable. As I say, that's the only show I can think of that isn't pay-per-view that's actually going to be worth watching. The first one for ages and ages and ages on DAZN. And in fact, going back to Frank Warren's previous attitude towards the zone, the stuff he was coming out with about how he cares so much about the fans. You remember when Frank Warren was always banging on about StubHub, when Eddie Hearn had a deal with that company and Frank Warren said that Hearn was conning the fans by working with StubHub? Where's Frank Warren's concern for the interest of the fans now? when DAZN are doing all this foul stuff to their customers. I'd like to think there aren't too many people out there who actually believe any of these promoters are sincere when they talk about how much they care for the fans, but there are bound to be some extremely foolish, naive individuals. Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, and all these other guys, they care about their business. And that's okay, they're supposed to care about their business, but they make out as though they're doing it all for the fans. They love the fans so much, they respect the fans so much. These people are like politicians. They just tell you whatever they think you want to hear. Don't be so foolish as to believe they're sincere. Anyway, we know that Turkey Al Sheik would like to have all major boxing events under one broadcaster and having Frank Warren sign with the zone is a major step towards that. But will that be a good thing for one broadcaster to basically have a monopoly, not on the whole sport, because that's going to be impossible, but on the major events, the major fighters in the sport? For me, it depends on two things. One, whether the Saudis in collaboration with the zone, there's been some speculation the Saudis might actually buy the zone at some stage, as in buy it outright, not just buy a piece of it, whether or not they fulfill the zone's original apparent intention to become the Netflix of sport, because they are so far away from that at this stage, it's not even funny. But if they manage to get enough of this premium quality boxing on the platform and that drives enough subscriptions and what have you will that then allow them to become what they previously claimed they were going to be will you pay your subscription fee monthly and there are virtually no pay-per-views and the vast majority of big fights are all part of the subscription fee if that becomes a reality then it is a good thing having most big time boxing under one broadcaster but another thing that is important to me at least, is that fighters 
continue to be paid the majority of money generated by the shows. Now I'll put an asterisk next to that because that isn't the case with all shows or even most shows. But when you're dealing with the superstar fighters, in many cases, they're the ones taking the majority of the money from the show. When Canelo fights and broadcasters aside, I should have mentioned that because broadcasters take like 50% of the money, but what's left, the majority goes to the superstar fighter and then a minority goes to the promoter. Boxing is one of the few sports in the world. It might be the only major sport in the world where that's actually the case. I like fighters being empowered to that extent. They're the ones risking their lives at the end of the day. And they are the most important people because without the fighters, nobody gets paid a penny. So I like the business of boxing to acknowledge the fact that the fighters are the most important part of the whole thing. In MMA, at least with UFC, that is not acknowledged. Dana White and the UFC as a company have an extremely arrogant attitude, which is horrendously disrespectful to the fighters, underpaying them and what have you. Turkey Al Sheik, a couple of months back, made a comment that in the long run, fighters' purses are going to have to come down because they're getting paid too much right now. That's what he actually said. Now, you could argue genuinely that in some instances, fighters are getting paid too much because if the shows are losing money, then something's obviously wrong. But if the shows are making money, then again, for me, the big fighter, the big name, who's responsible for drawing all that attention for the show to make the big money, he should get the lion's share, not the promoter, the fighter. As long as that remains the case long term with Saudi involvement and perhaps the majority of big fights being on the zone, again, that would be a good thing. So those are my thoughts on this move. Leave your thoughts in the comment section below about Frank Warren signing with DAZN. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? Tell me what you think the pros and cons are. Make sure you like this video, share it, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out.